Squash, but we're going to have to take you to squash school with you, Blanche. <laughs> it's a little squash mania in my kitchen today, and I can't wait to tell you about these because they add so much color and flavor to dishes without overwhelming other ingredients. How many different types of squashes are there? There are like over 100 different kinds. Oh my gosh. So it could be very overwhelming for people. I mean, I understand people look at this and they're like, what do I do with this? It's so heavy. Do I lug it around? I'm not really good with a knife. Am I going to stab myself? But there are so many ways that you can incorporate incorporate squash into your menu without much fuss. How do you choose a squash? Okay, so when I choose a squash, I want to make sure that the color is uniform, that it's heavy, and that the uh, stem is intact. So those are the, the three things to look for when selecting squash. Is this the season right now? It is prime season right now. So we've got November up until December is when squash is at its peak. So it's good to buy a bunch. And if I could fill up my whole refrigerator full, I would. <laughs> uh, show me the different types you have here. Yeah, so I've got all kinds. So let's start with this one. This one people might not be really familiar with. It's called the curry squash, K-U-R-I. And it has the flavor of chestnuts, which is really Ooh. unique. Yeah. And then we've got delicata. Now delicata is the closest to a summer squash in that you can eat the skin. It's got a creamy tender flesh and some people make french fries with it. So it's really easy to use. You can cut right through the skin. It's very thin and it's colorful too. Then we've got, everyone knows about the butternut squash, which yes. I cut in a cross section. And these are great for savory and and sweet dishes, chilies, stews. You could even put them in muffins. So instead of pumpkin bread, you could do butternut squash bread. And the final squash we're going to talk about, which we're going to do a recipe, is uh, the kabocha squash, which is like a Japanese pumpkin. And I love it because it's starchy. It tastes kind of like sweet potato, but it's easier to digest on the gut. So uh, we're going to make a fantastic recipe with this. So storing squash, you could keep them in your pantry for up to two to three months. But if you put it in your refrigerator, they're good for up to a year. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, time for a recipe. So we're gonna start with the kabocha. Yes, we're gonna do a maple glazed kabocha with a tahini dressing. Take out the uh, seed, and what you do is you just slice and make sure you wash it. You can actually eat the skin. It turns out very nice and soft when you're roasting it in the oven. And look how simple this is, Malou. It's probably really washes. good for you too, huh? It's awesome for you. Beta carotene, vitamin C, and vitamin A, wow. uh, folate. And all you have to do is add a tablespoon of maple syrup. Okay. Okay, and a tablespoon of olive oil. All right. Perfect. And we're gonna just mix it up. And I'm just for some a little bit extra flavor, just a dash of cinnamon. Cinnamon. Yes. Just a dash. You don't have to use too much. Okay. And just a little sprinkle of salt to taste. Okay. And you're done. Now you could go to the supermarket. They sell them spiralized like this. You could use it in the place of pasta if you're yeah. low carbing it. And they also sell them cubed, so you don't have to go through the trouble of washing and cutting. Just buy it cubed and that's it. All right, so how long do you put that in the oven for? So we're gonna put this in the oven at uh, 400 degrees okay. for about 20 minutes or until nice and browned. Now what we have in here is, I'll start here with the two tablespoons of tahini, so just tahini paste, any kind will do. Okay. And to that, to add some flavor, we're going to add, you have right there, perfect. That's a tablespoon of maple syrup. Okay and a half a teaspoon of onion powder, and a half a teaspoon of, uh, this is dried mint. And this is juice of half of the lemon. And what I'm just going to do is whisk it. We already baked the kabocha squash. Look how pretty that looks. Love it. This is gonna add a creamy, nutty element to complement the earthy flavor of the kabocha. Mm. Okay, are you ready to release your inner pull up? Yes. <laughs> okay, take, the, take the pistachios, and I've got pomegranates, and let's just sprinkle it all on top. Launch. I've just graduated from squash school. Thank you very much. You are a proud graduate, and now you can incorporate squash in all your meals. I'm so proud of you. Squash you. <laughs> <laughs>